This is my Ender 3 S1 Pro, and this is a failed torture toaster. It failed because the printer jammed, and today I'm gonna to show you how to take this Sprite hot end apart and unjam it. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So like I said, this thing is jammed and we need to fix it. I tell you what, this is gonna take a little bit. I am filming this intro after I've already done the unjamming, and I tell you what, it was a little more involved than I thought it was gonna be. So watch the video, make sure you put everything back together right, and it'll start working in the end. I don't wanna make this video too long, so let's jump right into it. Radar about to be yes. So I heated up the hot end to 240 degrees, and I am gonna push 10 millimeters of filament through it right now. As you can see, it is just clicking. You can see it here, it's not feeding and I can't push the filament in or out myself either. I mean, I can pull it all the way out, but I can't push it in any further. So I'm gonna have to pull this thing apart and find that jam. So the first thing I did, I took my filament out of the top and I cooled the machine down before I'm doing any of this. You don't want to do this when it's hot because you definitely will burn yourself. Now I'm gonna pop the cable off the top here and pull that out. Then we need to take out the four screws that hold the extruder onto the hot end. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna remove these four screws and they're not super tight, so it should come out pretty quick. When you get the four screws out right there, all you have to do is lift and pull and the extruder comes right off. Now that you got your hot end off the printer, uh, this is the fun part. Um, looking at this, we're probably gonna have to pretty much take the whole thing apart just to get in here and get that jam out. So to start, from what I can see, we need to start with the bolts on this backboard. We're gonna start here, here, and here, and then go from there. So. What I'm gonna do is take off this, this, and this, and we probably should get these two unplugged here because we don't wanna break those in the process. It looks like there is some hot glue on these two here. We'll get those clips out carefully. I'm gonna get a uh, side cutter. Actually, that one peeled off pretty good. Sometimes you could just take your fingernail and peel off the glue, and that's okay too. Both of those did pretty dang good. And then be very careful and just unplug like that. Then what you wanna do is take off one, two, three bolts here. And we're gonna do that now. Once you get the two off, the two in the top actually hold this black piece on. So we'll pull that apart here. And then the one here is very long. So take that one off and your board should just pull over to the side like that. Now I turned it kind of upside down and this is our CR touch. And there's a bolt right here in the top of the CR touch that we need to take out next. So we're just going to take this bolt out right here and hopefully that should loosen this whole plate out. Now that I got this bolt out right here, you can see it's almost loose, but it's still kind of on there. So there's gotta be one more holding us in and if we turn it around, it's right there. So I'm gonna take this one out next. Once I got that one out, that whole side piece pops off, and that's our fan shroud and our CR touch. You can see what we're left with. This is the hot end here, uh, the cooler fan. This is all the electronics in the side we had to take off. Now you can disconnect everything to the board if you want to. But what I noticed is all I really wanna do is get into uh, the extruder here. So I'm really hoping that if we take these three bolts out here, it'll allow the top of this extruder to like pop off. That way we can see what's inside and what's causing the jam. So let's try that. We're gonna remove one, two, three bolts right now. I'm gonna jump in real quick to say if you are getting value from today's video, please hit that like button. It really helps spread the video through the community and I really, really appreciate it. Now back to it. Okay, it pays to look at things before you get too far. I was gonna take this nozzle out. I was gonna take the nozzle off and take those two screws out. But what I realized is that I could actually pull the block out carefully, just like that. And now your whole hot end block there 
comes off, which is awesome. So I'm gonna set that aside and see where we can go with this. So we got the block off and this still won't come out. It just doesn't wanna come off. So I'm assuming something else is holding this on. And if I flip this aside, this looks like our, our shroud here for the fan. So I'm gonna take off this screw here next. Once I have that screw out there, I think we gotta take off the two fan screws in the top here. So we'll grab our Allen wrench and we'll take out the two fan screws in the top here as well. We'll take off that. That removes the fan to the side and it exposes two more screws right there. Right here and right here. I believe these two are holding this thing together. I'm gonna to take out these two here next that were right under that fan and let's see what we can get. All right, I got the second one out. We'll lift that off and that's the mount for our fan. And let's see, this thing still does not want to come apart. Oh, it's slowly coming apart. There we go, I got it off. Let's get this focused and try to get this extruder apart. All right, I got this off the extruder like we saw and it appears what I need to do is hold down the bottom and just kind of pull it back and forth carefully until hopefully it comes out here. I'm just trying to get this top cover off so we can see what is causing our jam. There we go. So I'll pull that up and we have the gears and the spring and everything right inside of your Sprite extruder. Let's take a quick look at the uh, gears here. It is a dual gear drive. This is where your filament travels right through here. This is the knob to turn everything on the outside and here's your tension spring right here. So that's how the filament goes in. You pull this down and it allows it to go through your little uh, channel right here. So you wanna make sure those are lined up before we put this back together. Then through the channel here, it, it comes into here, comes into the top there, it hits those gears here and pushes down through here. And it appears that my filament, which is blue, you can see is jammed, it's stuck right here somehow. And I'm not sure why it got stuck there, um, but I can tell you that it's definitely stuck. At first glance, I thought this was a PTFE tube when we pulled this apart, but that is super small. And then I started looking and you can see where the extruder put grooves in the filament as it was pushing it through. So I'm gonna pull that out with a uh, pliers and let's see if we can get this thing unjammed. All right, so I grabbed my little pliers here I'm going to grab a hold and just give this some yanks. Oh, man, that is in there good. Whoa, there goes everything. But it appears, <laughs> now that I threw everything around, it looks like I got it out, and that is definitely filament here. That should not be jammed in there. If I look through the path, I can see through it now, which is a great sign. That's awesome. And I'm gonna to try to put some filament down through to make sure we're good now. And I'm gonna load it in where you would load your filament at and push it through. And if I push it through, you can see there is a small PTFE lining right here in your extruder. I'm assuming that's just so it holds, you know, the, the filament path straight. So I'm gonna push that through. There you go. You can see filament through both sides. That is moving like it should and not jammed. Now, I don't know what happened, what caused this jam, but it was definitely stuck and we had to take the whole thing apart to get to it. Just a quick heads up. Normally, if you've seen my videos in the past, I would tell you to replace this PTFE tubing, this white PTFE tubing, with something good like the TH3D Tough Tube. I really like that or uh, Capricorn, whatever. In this case, I don't think we need to do that because this is not going down into the hot end and you want this to be a little bit wider uh, of a gap just so your filament actually travels through it in the extruder. If you notice, it doesn't go any further because this is an all metal hot end. So you don't want that too tight of a tolerance or it could be a pain to get your filament loaded into your extruder. So I'm gonna leave that white piece in there. When I have your top piece and you're gonna set it back down on here, it has to get the gap here has to go between those gears. So when you're pushing this down, pull back your lever a little bit. Um, 
pull back the lever and, and make sure that you're pushing it in nice and straight. Once you get it in nice and straight, it'll all push together and then your lever will work. So if your PTFE lining pops out, just push it back in and you're gonna be good. Now, something to try before we get too far if you want is you could load a piece of filament down through the gears if you want to. Um, it's kind of hard to do when it's not on everything because you have to press the lever here to let everything go through. But if you do it right, it should come through and go through the bottom. So everything's good to go here. We're gonna put this back on the extruder, get everything mounted back on just like we took it off. If you wanna see that, uh, just do the reverse steps we did to remove it. And let's see how this thing extrudes. Before I put it back on the printer, I just wanted to say that in doing this, I learned that I probably could have taken the two screws out under here, the two bolts, and this back one, which is the set screw to hold your all metal uh, hot end in there. And this would have come out of the printer here. Then I may have been able to see that uh, filament and pulled it out with the pliers this way. And that might have saved me a whole bunch of time. But I'm glad I did this because now I know how to take this thing apart and I know how it works. So make sure you're plugged back in. Make sure everything is secure. All the screws are put back in. And yes, somehow I forgot one. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take this thing apart and figure out where it came from. But uh, make sure it's all put back together and let's throw it on the printer. Okay, the moment of truth for the extruder we just unjammed. I'm gonna take some filament and we're gonna push it right into the top. Pull that open just so it goes in, just like that. If you can see, I can actually put it all the way through the extruder now. Before I was not able to do that. So I'm gonna tell the extruder to extrude 50 millimeters of filament and let's see what happens. It's hard to see but it is coming out here with the blue filament and the blue wall behind. It's kind of hard to see, but it is coming out. It is extruding like it should now. There we go. And it appears our jam is good to go. As you can see here, the 50 millimeters did come out and it appears that we have unjammed this machine. It's time to start testing again. So that's it. We've successfully unjammed the Sprite extruder on the Ender 3 S1 Pro and we've been able to extrude 50 millimeters of filament from it. This is gonna be the same thing as if you do the Ender 3 S1 non-pro, except you'll see a piece of PTFE tubing that goes from the extruder down to that hot end, so when you put it back together, make sure it's pressed all the way up against your nozzle. Overall, this probably would have taken me roughly 10 minutes if I was not filming, so I don't think that's terrible, but it's definitely a little more complicated than Creality's past extruders. I think we're good to go. It's time to get this thing printing, but first I'm going to calibrate the E-steps and you can find that in this video right here.